we're going to look at some more examples of solving using the addition property of equality. Um, these examples are a little different than the ones we looked at previously. The first one is going to be 8x minus 5 equals 9x. Now, I know in the previous two examples, uh, we only had one variable. Here we have two. Our goal is still to solve the equation, right? So we're still solving for x. Um, what we have to do in this case is make sure that we move the x's to one side and everything else to the other, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 8x from both sides. When we do that, these are going to cancel out. And all that I'm left with on this side of the equal sign is negative 5. Here I have 9x minus 8x. Now the x's are together, and I just have to simplify. That leaves me with x. So here, x equals negative 5. This should be our answer. I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure that it is our answer by rewriting that first equation. And plugging negative 5 into both x's. So I have 8 times negative 5 minus 5 equals 9 times negative 5. Right, so I plug the negative 5's in for the x's. Now I'm just going to check. 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. I still have this minus 5 I have to write down. And it's going to equal 9 times negative 5, which is negative... <laughs> negative 45. Now, negative 40 minus 5, that's negative 45. Now both sides equal each other, which means that negative 5 is the solution to our original equation. Okay. We're going to look at one more example, and this one's going to deal with fractions. I know a lot of times when students see fractions, they freak out a little bit. It's okay, we're going to go through it together. So this example is 1 over 3 minus b equals, oh sorry, uh, 1 over 3 equals b minus 2 over 5. Sorry about that. So we're still trying to solve for b. When you have fractions in an equation and you're trying to solve for something, my best piece of advice Get rid of the fractions, right? It makes life a lot easier if you can get rid of them. So what we're going to look at is how to get rid of them. We have uh, 1 over 3 and we have 2 over 5. So they don't have a common denominator. B doesn't have a denominator. Uh, it's not a fraction. But we can make it a fraction if we put it over 1, right? And I'll actually go ahead and, and write this one more time. So I have 1 over 3 equals b over 1 minus 2 over 5. So all we did, all we did for now, is make this be a fraction by putting it over 1. Now what we're going to try and do is find a common denominator so that we can start to cancel out some of these fractions. Okay, A common denominator for us. How do we figure that out? Well, what we're going to do is take all of the denominators that we have, We're going to write them down. So right now I have 3, 1, and 5. The easiest way to find a common denominator is to just multiply all of these together. 3 times 1 times 5. That's going to be 15. Right? So 15 is going to be our common denominator. What we have to do is figure out, looking at our denominators that we have, what do I have to multiply 3 by to get me 15? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to multiply this 3 by 5. Whatever I do to the bottom of the fraction, though, I have to make sure to do to the top. Okay, so now everything's even. So this fraction is going to become 5 over 15. Okay. Here I have a 1. 
how do I make 1 into 15? Well, I multiply it by 5, or sorry, by 15. Well, again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So up top now, I'm going to have 15b, and on the bottom, I have 15. The last fraction, this negative 2 over 5, uh, how do I get it from 5 to 15? I multiply by 3. Again, whatever is done to the bottom has to be done to the top. Okay? So we're going to go ahead. The bottom is now 15, and the top is 6. Now that my denominators are all equal, I can just focus on what the top uh, parts of each fraction are. So what I have is 5 equals 15b minus 6. Now I can just solve this equation for b. To solve for b, what I need to do is move everything that isn't b over to the other side of the equal sign. So everything has to go this way. I'm going to do this by adding 6 to both sides. And I have, I'm just going to rewrite this over here. I have 11 equals 15b. Now to get b completely by itself, and we haven't really talked about this yet, but 15 times b. To get rid of multiplication, we're going to divide both sides by 15 because division is the opposite of multiplication. Here the 15s are going to cancel out and I have b equals 11 over 15. And that is going to be my answer. That is how you solve equations using the addition property of equality.